Hello everyone, this is Braden Kelly of bloggingintnovation.com. I'm here with Dean Kamen uh, of Segway fame and also of, of First Fame as well. Uh, Mr. Kamen, I'd like to ask you about your Segway experience. And obviously there you were achieving both a technological innovation but also trying to change cultural behavior at the same time, how people uh, interacted with technology and with transportation. What can you tell me about your experience in trying to do both of those things? Actually, I think it's no different than pretty much every other uh, attempt at taking an invention, a piece of technology, and turning it into an innovation. Um, sadly, these days, technology is moving so quickly, the inventions keep coming faster and faster, but innovation, namely the ability of societies to really adopt invention is not only not increasing its rate, it's slowing down. The world is getting older, it's getting more conservative. Um, we see these days, and not inappropriately, we see that many apparently good inventions or innovations have secondary effects, unintended consequences that may not be good. Uh, you know, we've lived now for a few decades where, you know, not all the results of great new uh, chemicals has turned out to be harmless, not all the results of great new technologies uh, have been good across the board. But, you know, the Segway is, a, is an example of a piece of technology that we believed and still believe properly applied uh, can add efficiency, convenience, environmental friendliness in lots of situations, but it requires people to change the way, for instance, they organize highly dense uh, pedestrian environments. But, but taking the invention, a balancing platform, and helping make it an innovation, something that's accepted by the world, um, is a long and difficult process because people, no matter where they are, really almost always viscerally uh, uh, resist change. I mean, 20 something years ago, I made the first wearable infusion pumps that would deliver insulin to diabetics. And very quickly thereafter, the medical community knew that if you could keep people much, much more tightly controlled in their glucose than giving them one shot a day, make them much more like a typical person whose pancreas is working all day long, they would avoid all the long-term life problems of being a diabetic. It took something like 20 years before the medical community finally accepted insulin pumps as a standard of care. Almost every new invention we make takes a couple of years to do and a couple of decades to get accepted. That's almost Unfortunately, I guess the definition of a really big invention, it's one that requires society to really fundamentally change to have it become an innovation. I like that distinction that you draw between invention and innovation because I, I draw that distinction on my blog as well and, and it is very difficult to get people to accept these big changes and uh, I'm sure Clayton Christensen quite well appreciates the, the insulin pump and the, and the invention of that because I was at the World Innovation Forum recently and he was talking about, oh, I better uh, push this button or I might keel over here in the middle of this, this presentation. So, uh, second question I'd like to ask is in regards to, to FIRST and, and talking about your work there and trying to inspire kids to be more interested in science and robotics and, and really what some of the key things that you're most proud of there and maybe some of the things you're looking to do in the, the future? Well again, the invention in FIRST was create an organization that does things to break down really, really, I think, very dangerous stereotypes, particularly in, in the culture in this country, by which particularly women and minorities in this country believe that all the exciting careers and all the fun jobs and all the things they aspire to do when they become an adult come from one of two places, the world of entertainment and Hollywood and the world of sports, the NBA and the NFL. And we said, what if we could create an institution that could effectively promote to kids the fact that science, technology, engineering, problem solving, inventing, is in fact way more accessible, way more fun, and way more realistically a career opportunity than the idea that you're going to grow up to be seven feet tall and you're going to be one of a half a dozen people that makes millions of dollars bouncing a ball for your career. So we created all sorts of opportunities through FIRST and it's now got thousands of corporate sponsors and tens of thousands of mentors. We've created this, the invention was this organization. The innovation of FIRST will come when you walk down the streets here in New York and you see kids appropriately wearing, you know, 
sports shirts, the Celtics and the Bruins and the Yankees and the Mets, but every once in a while a kid walks by wearing a fur shirt, where one of these kids has a role model and a hero from the world of science, technology, engineering, inventing, because in a free country, particularly in a place like America, where we get the best of what we celebrate, if we don't start celebrating in a really big way the importance and fun and power of science and technology, then kids are going to waste that, that magic decade from, you know, 7 to 17, where they get to focus on the hardest fun they'll ever have, learning. And if they continue to waste that learning to bounce a ball or do other things that seem like they're fun and might lead to this one in a million kids making a career, they're going to get to 18, and they're not going to have the skill sets to compete in the 21st century world. They're not going to have the skill sets to make themselves or their families or their country happy and productive and creative and, 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 and successful. So I think that the world really is right now in a race between technical competence and catastrophe. And I don't want to see catastrophe win. Right. So we've got to get more kids involved with the same passion they have for entertainment and sports. We've got to get them involved in, in first. Well, that's great. Well, I think it's a, a remarkable effort, and I wish you all the success with it. I, I have a four-and-a-half-year-old daughter, and I'd love to see her passionate about science and technology and then also about creativity as well. So what, what role do you see creativity in, and potentially also training kids to think creatively at the same time that they're learning about science to creating accomplished inventors and innovation uh, people like yourself? Well, I think you know, when kids play a sport, they don't know what's going to happen at the end. The answer isn't in the back of the book. That game is exciting because there's going to be a surprise, because you can affect the outcome. Ironically, kids believe that math and science is boring, and the answer is always in the back of the book, and it's all been done before, and it's just this drudgery and this rote learning. It's the way we present science that turns kids off, not the raw stuff of inventing and thinking and imagining and turning your imagination into reality and creating new solutions. So I, I think your four and a half year old daughter, like most little four and a half year olds, is probably already a born scientist. She walks around all day poking herself and learning and falling down and learning something new and she's just absorbing and learning and understanding. But then we put them in a school environment where they go in as a question mark. They come out as a period, probably punctuated because they've learned grammar, <laughs> but we need to return to the world of science and engineering the same kind of excitement that kids have when they go to that sporting event or when they go to that entertainment event and say, you know, nobody knows who's going to create the next invention. We don't even know what the next great invention is going to be. Something's going to change the world and your daughter may be the person that presents it, but she's got to be given incentive, she's got to be given encouragement, she's got to be brought into a world where people see science and technology and engineering inventing as really accessible and really rewarding and really fun and really exciting and available to everybody including little girls and that's what we're hoping to do with FIRST. Well I think it's great work that you're doing and I think that the, the whole country and the whole world appreciates it. I hope you keep it up and I've uh, appreciated the chance to talk with you. So once again this is Braden Kelly of bloggingInnovation.com here with Dean Kamen of First and Decca Research fame. So thank you very much.